Hello, and welcome to this video on JDBM2. We'll be going over several concepts in JDBM2, and in particular discussing how you can use JDBM2 to instantiate new indexes as part of Checkpoint 3. As a baseline, I'll be using the code that was released earlier today, the reference implementation for Checkpoint 1. Now I've created a simple build indexes class here that I'll be using to illustrate the process of constructing a new primary index using JDBM2. In order to build an index, I first need to actually load the data in. Fortunately, I already have code for this. I can use the same evaluation code that I wrote for checkpoint 1 in order to load the data in. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to actually be integrating this in with the rest of my implementation, with the rest of the checkpoint implementation. I'll simply be hard coding several values. So let me start by loading in, uh, by hard coding the, uh, an instantiation of the orders schema. Part of the reference implementation is uh, an operator called file scan operator. The operator interface that is implemented within uh, the checkpoint one reference implementation is a very simple iterator interface with a done method and a read next tuple method, exactly as described in my previous videos. The schema.table is just a way of representing the schema of a given table. What I have here simply hard codes the orders schema and then instantiates a file scan operator to read from a hard coded data file. Okay, let's have a look at the JDBM2 web page. The JDBM2 web page has a variety of examples already present here and using on the examples page, as well as a Java doc, which we'll be referring to extensively over the course of this video. The primary class that you'll be interacting with, and in fact the class that mediates nearly all of your interaction that will mediate nearly all of your interactions through JDBM2, is called record manager. A record manager corresponds to an index file which can contain multiple indexes. To instantiate a new record manager, we use the record manager factory class. Record manager factory has a method called create record manager, which takes a file name to use as a basis for the index. If the index already exists, the record manager will open the existing index file. Otherwise, a new set of index files will be created. Record Manager itself has three methods that allow you to access primary or clustered indexes. Hash map, store map, and tree map. Each of these take a string parameter naming the map. If a map with that particular name exists in the index file, the index will be opened and returned from this method. If the index does not exist, or if no index exists with that name, a new empty index will be created and returned. Let's see this in action. So first, I'm going to use my record manager factory to create a new record manager, and I'm going to call it my index. This will create several files in the current working directory called my index dot such and such. Each of those are going to be accessed through this index class. The next thing I need to do is actually instantiate a new index. 
I do this using the tree map method, and I'm going to call my tree map orders underscore primary. The key and the attribute of this are going to be a row in my database table. Now my operator class returns a datum array exactly as my in my previous videos for every single tuple in the output of the file scan operator. Java native serialization has some problems serializing raw arrays. So I've chosen to wrap it inside a row class. As a side effect, this allows me to use the comparable interface, which is required by the tree map for its keys. The tree map itself operates exactly like a standard Java map. As you can see, it extends both the map and the sorted map interfaces. This makes it very easy to use. In order to instantiate the elements of this index, I scan over every single row produced by the existing file scan operator. I read it in, and then I instantiate a key by picking out the appropriate set of columns. In this case, my key is the order key attribute, and I've hard-coded it. This would be done automatically using the primary key attribute of the create table statement parsed by JSQL parser. To add the row to the index, all I have to do is call put on the map. As one final step, as an optimization, JDBM2 does not immediately flush every write to disk. This means we need to tell it when it is safe to write things to disk. We do this using the commit method on the record manager. This flushes all pending writes to disk and frees up memory. You'll note that these writes, which are pending, get buffered in memory. As there is a finite amount of memory, you may need to commit more than once while instantiating the index. As a consequence, I've added this little piece of code here that commits every thousand operations. All right, let's see how this works. Let's first compile, and then run it. That was fast. I've only run this on a data set containing a few hundred tuples. In fact, I only have 16 kilobytes of data. If we take a look at the index files that have been constructed, you'll note that one of the index files, the one that actually stores the data, has grown to a whopping 148 kilobytes. This is because Java serialization carries a lot of redundancy in it. In fact, let's have a look at what goes on inside this index file. I'm going to use a utility called hexdump to have a look at what is happening inside the index file. Hexdump produces output that shows every single byte in hexadecimal and ASCII form. The left-hand column over here the left-hand column shows the position in the file, the center two columns show the actual bytes, and the right-hand column shows the ASCII representation of the same data. You'll note, as we go through this file, that something appears quite frequently. In fact, this 
edu.buffalo.cse562.data.datum, followed up by integer, row, what have you, appears extremely frequently. The reason for this is that Java serialization needs to be able to reconstruct the classes from scratch. It has no information that it can use from the outside. It has no context that it can use to infer which classes a particular object belongs to. As a consequence, it has to write every single fully qualified class name into the index. In the next video, we'll be discussing how you can get around this. But the short version is that there is a, a class in JDBM2 called Serializer that allows you to serialize things on your own. Because you have access to schema information, this allows you to create a much more compact data representation. Thank you, and good luck.